Okay, can anybody guess who my special guest is? He's cute and his name begins with a B. Hi, Debbie. No, it's not Tracy. It's male and the name begins with a B, like in boy. I have a feeling you're not gonna guess. Okay, count down, five, four, three. Oh no, I wish it were Brian Pilling. Wouldn't that be something <laughs> to have Brian Pilling from the Stampin' Up! Home Office here? Wow, that would be a thrill. That would be hard to keep secret though. Bill the Gnome, no. Okay, three, two, one. Here's my special guest, not my brother. Meet Barrett. Isn't he cute? Can you say hi, Barrett? This is um, Barrett, who belongs to my sister Joan's family. Joan and her youngest daughter Avery are in Hilton Head on a spring break trip with friends. Her little, um, the big sister, Joan's oldest daughter, Allison, is finishing her freshman year at Ohio State. And Barrett's daddy is away on a business trip. So he'll be getting, uh, Barrett will be getting picked up tonight at 1030. And I think I might have him Thursday for a little bit too. Gaylord gets back into town and then goes back out of town tomorrow. But isn't he cute? And usually I watch him at their house, but he's hanging out with me today. And he did not stamp with me, but I am going to show you what he did help me do today. Hi, Chrissy. Okay, there's a sneak peek. Okay, last Thursday, or last Tuesday on my Facebook Live, I mentioned that I had not found any flowers yet. And the lovely Marion Henrik brought me this at class last week in Liberty Township. And then Barrett and I, you wanna show me what you did, Barrett? We planted more flowers. Only pansies though, because it's still too early for anything else. But anyways, that is my excitement. That is my news for the day. And let me put Barrett in here. Say goodbye, Barrett. Oh look, he's so good. I brought a gate from my sister's house. So he does not have full run of my house. Come here, I'll take your leash off. Look, he gets his own spot for his dishes. Okay. Who's ready to stamp? Okay. Don't look at the mess all over the place in here, but it is time to stamp now. Okay. If you miss seeing my special guest, you'll have to go back and watch the replay later. Okay. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. It's a lovely evening here in Columbus, so um, I might even get out and take another walk today before, um, before it's too late. But first of all, I've got two projects to show you tonight. Last week we did pocket cards, and I'll quickly show you those, if you remember. I should have taken them out of the cellophane. But these are my pocket cards. I did wedding cards. Okay. If you did not see me make these last week, um, definitely go back and take a look in the video section for last week's Facebook Live, or you can also find it on my stampinpiece.typepad.com blog. I think it's .com. Okay. After I do Facebook Lives, within a couple of days, I do um, download them, edit, it edit the Facebook Live video slightly, and then I upload them to YouTube and my Stampin' Peace blog. 
If you saw my blog post, um, you'll see that I made a couple of scrapbook pages around the pocket pages or pocket cards that I showed you last week. Okay. And these are something that you can use for journaling. Okay. Put your photos in. Um, you can pull this out perhaps on the part that's showing. You might have a title or a date or occasion, and then you can pull it out and write a quick little memory or a personal thought, something like that. Okay, here's another one. Okay. So lots of fun with pocket cards and the Petal Promenade Designer Series paper. Just a reminder, you can get that Petal Promenade Designer Series paper free with a $50 order between now and March 31st when celebration ends. Ladies, please click the share button if you have not done so already. Sharing this as we're live um, just gives a reminder to other people out there to join in. Okay. Uh, I told you this week I'd be showing you a different kind of pocket card. And thanks, Debbie. I appreciate it. And this is my inspiration for today's card. I received this in a swap. And I don't remember the woman's name, but it was Stamp with K. That's an initial K, Stamp with K. Um, I want to say it's Carla. I'm sorry, I can't remember the last name, but I wanted to give a shout out to her. Okay, so this is my inspiration card. Now let me show you what I made with it. Okay, this is my pocket card. Okay, and of course it's springtime and you know I'm focusing on flowers and Easter and uh, beautiful spring colors, all that, all um, the things that help us deal with our spring fever. Okay, so there's my pocket card, which was inspired by this one. Would you like to learn how to make it? Okay, I'm going to set this right here so you can see it while I'm demonstrating. Again, um, I am focusing on this pocket card and I'm featuring the Fable Friends cling stamp set. If you have not tried the cling stamp sets, you really should. Um, they're amazing at just how sticky they are and how easily they go on and stick to our clear acrylic blocks. Okay. So what you're going to need is an envelope, of course, a card base, which is standard size five and a half by eight eight and a half inches, and I scored it four and a quarter on the long side. I also have a piece of five and a quarter by four inch Whisper White cardstock for the inside of the card. And I did stamp on the inside this time. I don't always. You are going, and that's Highland Heather, by the way. You will need a piece of gorgeous grape that is cut to five and a quarter inches by four inches. Whisper white cardstock cut to five inches by three and three quarter inches. That'll get layered on the gorgeous grape. You'll need a solid piece of Highland Heather and a solid piece of the Gingham Gala designer series paper. And uh, this is also Highland Heather. And this measures let me think a second. Three inches by three and three quarter. They both measure three inches by three and three quarter. And we will be cutting these. And then finally, you'll have, um, and I have to think real quick, four, and a, four inches by, this is four inches by two and a half. And then three and three quarter inches by two and one quarter. Okay, so those are the pieces we're using. And let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to 
I'm going to stamp off a little bit. So I'm going to use this piece of scrap paper. Where's my envelope? Oh, I got a mark on my envelope, but that's okay. Um, I am going to stamp with Moment Memento black ink. That is because I'm going to be using my Stampin' Blends marker. So this is the um, best ink to use with Stampin' Blends. I'm going to stamp a little bit of my bunny on the envelope. And then I'm doing one at the bottom right corner of my inside panel. Okay. And I'm also going to stamp, since I'm stamping bunnies, I'm going to keep in mind you do not want to put your pieces on top of this black. It takes the black a little while to dry. Learn from my boo-boos, my experiences, that um, you do not want to lay your things on top of that, especially if you flip them over and are getting ready to tape because you can smudge some of that black ink. It takes a little bit longer to dry. Okay. I'm going to close this up so I don't make a mess. So I'm going to let these pieces dry a little bit. That's all I have to stamp off, so I'm going to move that paper. Okay. And I'm going to do some coloring now. I just decided I'm going to do all of my bunnies at once. Okay, and then we'll put the card together. So I'm using the Petal Pink Light Stamp and Blend to put a little color on the ears. Okay. I'm going to use Balmy Blue Dark for the little eyes, little blue eyes here, okay. And um, the other bunny I did in Smoky, I believe it was Smoky Slate, yes, Light and Dark Smoky Slate, okay. Um, shall we try something different? How about if we do crumb cake? Okay, let's try let's try the bunny and crumb cake. Okay. Okay, I got bunnies everywhere. They're like multiplying. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just highlight and some areas with the dark crumb cake. Okay, and then I'm going to fill in with the light crumb cake. With blends, I just like to use the tip of the um, brush end that I usually use the brush end more than I do um, the fine tip. And you want to work it like a paintbrush, not so much like a crayon going back and forth, but like a paintbrush when you're using that larger paintbrush end. Okay, I call it the paint the brush tip. Okay, just a few little dark spots. I might as well do it on this one too. We had a nice Stampin' Blends class last week that allowed people just to come and play with the Stampin' Blends a little bit. Um, so that was fun. I always started with light and then went dark and filled in with, or started, yes. No, started with dark and then light. And then some other people actually did it in the reverse. Um, they fill in with the light shade, go back and highlight or accentuate with the um, darker shade of the blend. And then if they need to, they can go back in and blend it all together with 
the light shade again, okay? So there's no right or wrong. It's really what your preference is if you want to start with the light or the dark. Oh, he's kind of cute in this crumb cake color, isn't he? Previous projects with this little bunny, I um, left him white, just highlighted tiny bits of gray, light gray. And then today I did that sample in the smoky slate, so it's kind of fun to try a different color. Okay, so there he is in the crumb cake color. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and color his coat. I'm going to just add highlights here with um, the dark shade. Not so much to do on these partial pieces. And then I'm going to blend with the light shade of Highland Heather. You can also get darker areas by going, actually just going over them. Going over the same areas multiple times. Okay. Cute. And it's, it's interesting that just a tiny little bit of variation in the color or the, the shade of the color um, makes such a big impact. Again, you notice I'm doing it pretty quickly. Most of it is done with most of the filling in I'm doing with that paintbrush tip. Okay, and a reminder, you use Memento ink with the Stampin' Blends, okay? That is so you don't get the smearing, um, the black doesn't smear while you're coloring, okay? So there's those pieces. So let's start putting our card together, okay? I've got my card base. Before I stamp, um, before I adhere it to the inside, I'm going to put... Happy spring in there. Okay. One thing to keep in mind, I'll just point this out since I, um, you can see this right now. The Stampin' Blends do show through the cardstock. So if you were doing a white cardstock and you wanted a white card base and you wanted the bunny, you know, done on the white card base, you really would need to back it. Or you'd put a second layer of the white, you know, have your white card base and then perhaps um, lay this one on top because you will see through and you don't want to open a card and see that. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It does bleed through. So you really don't want to um, color with your blends on a white card base. You want to be making sure to back it with either a color or another layer of the white. Okay. Now on, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, we should stamp a little more on. Well, that's all right. Let's put the rest of the card away before, or put the card together, I'm sorry, before we do that pull out. Okay, so now I'm adhering five inch by three and a three quarter inch piece of Whisper White to the Gorgeous Grape, which measures five and a quarter by four inches. I will be giving away this card at the end of the night, so make sure that you comment if you would like to win the card. Okay, now I told you that I have um, these two pieces, Highland Heather and then the DSP 
uh, Gingham DSP, they both measure three inches by three and three quarter. And I'm going to show you how to cut it so that um, you can get the pieces that you need, okay? You do want to keep in mind, like if I want this on the solid piece on the left, you do want to keep that in mind when you're cutting, okay? So you have the direction correct, okay? It doesn't really matter, but if you are particular um, or if your um, DSP is directional, that'll make a bigger difference too, okay? So there you have that piece, okay? And I'm going to put adhesive on the bottom and the side. I do not want it on this um, long diagonal side. I want to leave that open for my pocket, okay? Now the other one I need to cut in half also, but I want the right side. So this is going to be my angle for cutting, okay? It's a little bit different. And again, it doesn't really make that much difference um, unless, say, you are very particular to one side of the DSP. Um, this one really matters so much, you know. Or if your DSP is directional, okay? Debbie says she wants to win. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So again, I'm going to adhere this piece side and bottom. And then I still have this pocket in front. Okay, that's open. All right, remember in the past, hi Carol, remember in the past that I told you I tend to always make at least two of the same cards? If you're making one, you might as well make two. Well, here's a good reason for you to make two cards, okay? Because those pieces I gave you to cut, um, three inches by three and three quarter rectangles and we cut them in half to get the triangles. Okay, now you've got the pieces for another card. Okay, keep that in mind when you're prepping. Okay, now let's finish off the insert. Before I adhere that, I'm going to do just a little bit more stamping and then some sponging. I'm using Granny Apple Green, and I kind of go crazy on the grass. Don't forget, um, the bunny is not running on top of the grass. He's running through the grass. I'm smudging a little bit, but it actually looks kind of neat. And you can stamp off and all that to get different shades of green, okay? Use my handy dandy. Uh, you can't see it, but I have my Simply Chamois close by, because then I can clean up as I go. Next, I am going to do a little bit of sponging with the Balmy Blue. I have no idea what I did to my stamp set or what happened there. I'm going to remove my stamp and pierce mat so it doesn't get all yucky. But I have a sponge, and I'm going to put it in there in the ink just like that and then just very very lightly hardly touching I'm going to stamp some or uh, sponge some blue around that bunny okay kind of makes him pop gives it um, sort of a sky effect alrighty I really need to clean that up don't I that looks awful going to end up all over my fingers and I don't want it on my cards. Okay, so now I'm going to adhere this to this piece of Highland Heather. Did you all love my special guest? He really is a good pup. Hi Joyce. Okay, 
Now I'm using this triple punch. Um, this is in our annual catalog, I believe. And it's got a corner rounder. It's got this hole for inserting ribbons and things. Um, and then it's also got this decorative corner piece. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. And it's got notches here. You just have to make sure you push the cardstock all the way in so it's along both sides of this. But isn't that pretty? That's what it looks like. Okay. Here's, a, here's the corner rounder. Okay, makes a really nice corner rounder. Okay, so right there you got a um, couple of decorative corners. And then this little oval here is what I like to use when I want to um, tie ribbons on something, especially um, gift tags, things like that. I know you're probably seeing the top of my head, but there are notches over here that will help you line it up so it's flat. I'm trying to do this without you seeing the top of my head. It's a little tricky. I'm trying to look over it, but I don't want you to see all my gray hairs again. And then you just punch, okay? Easy, easy peasy. And again, um, you can find this in the annual catalog. Quite honestly, I'm calling it the triple punch or the triple corner punch. I don't even really know what it's called. Hi, Brittany. How are you? I think you probably have a new baby girl in your family by now, Brittany. I hope everything's going well. It's nice to have you here. And yes, it does look... Um, this little bunny does look a lot like the Beatrix Potter bunny, Peter Rabbit. Okay, so now I'm just going to add um, just a few inches of, I didn't even measure it to tell you the truth, it's probably four or five inches, of the gorgeous grape striped ribbon. This is also found in the annual catalog, and it goes nicely with both the gorgeous grape and the Highland Heather, okay? Then I'm going to take a piece of... white baker's twine. I don't really need it that long, but I need it long enough that I can easily tie a bow. Um, here's a little tip. If you just take your scissor snips and cut a straight notch, um, a little slice in the top, you can um, prevent your um, baker's twine from unraveling um, and you always know where the end is. Okay. A little tip to make life a little easier for you. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and this is going to be kind of tricky to hold this closed and to tie the baker's twine around it, so I'm just going to take one of these glue dots, put it right there, match up my ends, and then just squeeze it so that glue dot will now hold the ends of the ribbon in place for me to tie a knot and a bow with the baker's twine. And lots of people watching today. I'm so excited. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, it's not too late to click the share button if you have not done so already. And if you're watching and have not commented yet, please do so because you will be entered into a drawing to win tonight's card. I actually have two things I can give away because I am going to show you one more thing. Okay. Just realized how dry my skin is. Wow. Between working with my visiting angel clients, planting flowers, stamping, etc., they just and the weather, they just keep drying out. And of course, I always like to um, snip the ends of my ribbon at an angle. Okay, just gives it a little bit of a more polished, finished look. Now I'm ready to insert this. Okay. 
Um, I will tell you, you have plenty of room to write a message inside or have everybody in your family sign their names to your spring greeting. Or um, you can also, if you'd like, to attach a gift card right here. Thanks for sharing, Joyce. Thanks to everybody else who is sharing. Oh, Carol, I love that idea. She says, this card is a great idea to send seasonal bookmarks to friends. What an awesome idea. I love that. Love that. Um, that really is awesome. So cool. And that just gave me um, a rem um, an idea of using the Painted Seasons Designer Series paper. Um, it's available this month only. You can get it as a celebration item. Um, but wouldn't that be great, Carol? I love that idea. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, and let's just finish this off. Here you can see I added some of the glitter enamel dots. These are gorgeous, okay? These are gorgeous, okay? Um, just bright, fun colors, but I used four of the large ones in each of the corners, okay? Oh, I was gonna give you another tip about the little buttons here. I'm gonna color these buttons in the dark shade, okay? Just deepen them up, make them a little more um, obvious, I'll say. But my tip is that you can use our fine tip glue pen And just go over these dots, teeny weeny bits. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to be coming out. There we go. And I just put a little drop of it on each of those buttons and then do the same on this. Okay, and what it will do is, oh, I think I got a little bubble there. Let me see if I can get that out, yeah. I did have a bubble. Okay, so what this does is almost create, um, it's like creating your own little enamel dots. When these dry, and it will take a good bit of time for these to dry, um, I would say overnight to play it safe, okay? Um, but it'll just have a raised, those buttons will be you know, raised um, just like the enamel dots would be, okay? It's just kind of a fun thing to do with your fine tip glue. I'm gonna set that aside and make sure I don't bump it, okay? And let's finish out the label here. I'll show you how I did that, and then we'll add some enamel dots as well. Oh, using lots of punches tonight. Okay, so first I'm going to stamp Easter Greetings with the Highland Heather ink. Clean it off right away so I don't have to do so much cleanup later. Close that so I don't... Um, I'm going to let that dry a moment, and while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to use... A, um, I'll cut this with the one and quarter inch circle punch, Okay. Um, I'm going to use the one and three eighths inch scallop circle punch and cut um, cut that from the gorgeous grape, and then I have the one and a half inch circle punch that I'm using with the Highland Heather. And again, I'm actually cutting. Thanks, Debbie. I like those dots too. Um, Again, I'm using the one and a quarter inch circle. So I've got one and a quarter inch, one and three eighths inch scallop, and one and a half inch circle punch, okay? I'm just going to lay the, layer those all together with my adhesive. The scallop punch is just, I don't know, just dress things up a little bit, I'll say. Okay, and then I'm going to pop this up on a dimensional. I'm gonna pull this out just so I make sure I don't um, smudge those buttons that are still drying. 
And instead of, normally I would put my dimensionals on the circle, but I want to make sure that my dimensionals are in the right place, that I don't put it on the circle and then end up sticking to that um, insert that we want to pull in and out. So I'm just going to use one right there. And I'm going to put that there. Okay, remember I've got this pulled out just a little more than usual. It does tuck all the way in, but I'm wanting those, um, the bunny's buttons on his little suit coat to dry. And now we need to add some of these wonderful glitter enamel dots. Of course, I'm going to use my take your pick tool and I'm using the putty end. So I'm just turning it slightly so the putty comes out and I'm going to do something different this time. I'm going to I love how this picks up the enamel dot so easily and then I'm able to place them exactly where I want them. Okay, so I'm going to put some there. Um, I'm inclined to put three here. What do you think? Should I try it? I think I'm going to try it. I think my spacing on that second one could have been a little better. There we go. Okay. My spacing's not quite the same as at the bottom, but I think it will do. How do you like that? Okay. So fun, right? Fun Easter card. Um, fun card for spring. You can always change out the sentiment. It could be a welcome baby. Change out the colors. The... Um, Gingham Gala Designer Series Paper. If you haven't seen it, I hate to say, but, you know, where where are you if you haven't seen it? Okay, we've got the Daffodil, Highland Heather, Grapefruit Grove, um, Lemon Lime Twist, and Balmy Blue. And then the opposite side has a larger check pattern. Okay. Now... Um, a while back, I went to an event um, hosted by two demonstrators, Tina Rappi and Peggy Merwin, great ladies, and I met um, somebody new, or, uh, well, several new people, but sitting at um, my table um, with Joyce Whitman and Beth McCullough was another lady named, and I just lost her um I'm drawing a blank. I want to say Karen Baker, but I don't think it's Karen. Um, Kim, Kim Baker. Um, and she gave, we all exchange gifts. It's just a fun thing to do to give out little um, pillow gifts, as Stampin' Up! calls them, because when we're on trips and things, they um, leave us things on our bed or on our pillow at nighttime or the end of a day, which is always fun. Even my daughters get into it. Um, because they know that there will be some fun gifts during the trips. But anyways, um, this is one thing I received from her, and it has this cute little insert and a Ghirardelli chocolate. Okay, isn't that cute? So she used the Gingham Gala, obviously, and then she also used the Botanical Butterfly um, Designer Series Paper, another free option with Celebration. So... Let me show you this. Okay. How would this be for your Easter table or a spring shower or a ladies' tea or a little something to leave your coworkers? Debbie, these might be something fun and easy you could make for your um your fundraising that you do at your company. Okay. But I've used one of each of the colors in that Gingham Gala pack. Um, and I've used the Happy Spring from the Fable Friends stamp set. And then I finished off with the um, adhesive back sequins. Okay, 
let me show you how easy it is to make one of these. And by the way, um, she left her tab up. This is the way Kim gave it to each of us, which I think is fun. Okay, but I did mine a little bit differently. I just tucked in, um, my envelope is sealed there, but then I just tucked in that top flap under the ribbon. And then I just placed a Ghirardelli chocolate inside, okay? You could do a note, um, you could do other candies, um, just make it whatever you like it to be, something fun, okay? Let me show you how it is, how easy it is to make these. Okay, I feel like I've got an awful lot of stuff here. And I want to move some things so I'm not... So I don't mess these up while they're drying. Um, excuse me for a couple seconds here. My computer is putting up a message it wants to update. Are you kidding me? Not right now. I am much too busy stamping with my friends here. Okay. Alrighty. Sorry about that. Okay, so I, um, when I wanted to, was considering the size car, um, envelope I was making, I really did just copy, um, almost copied from Kim. Um, I anticipated about a three by three square. So imagine that you are um, making a little three by three card as an insert, which you could very well do and st still stick the Ghirardelli chocolate in there, um, but maybe a little card along with it. So whenever you're using the envelope punch board, as I am to make these favors, um, you need to consider what you're putting inside it. If I were making a card, a, an envelope for this particular card, my outside, or the, the card measures, finished card measures, five and a half by four and a quarter. So what I would do is look up on this chart the card size. Five and a half. Okay, so I'm going to have to go up a little bit. Or it might be four and a quarter here. Four and a quarter by five and a half is A2 size. And it tells me, okay, my card size, and then tells me how to cut my paper, eight and one eighth by eight and one eighth, okay? And then it also tells me where to start the score line, three and three quarters. And that refers to this up here. Your first edge will always start on this score line where it tells you a three and three quarter, okay? Now, anticipating that I wanted my little favors to be about three by three, I'm going on this chart. I'm looking at three by three card size. I scoot over to the next column. It tells me to cut my paper size five and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. So I'll do that now with my Handy dandy stamp and trimmer. Okay, so I've got my five and a quarter inch square, and it tells me that my starting point, the score line, should be at two and five eighths inch. So I'm going to push my paper up against that top, and I'm going to slide it over until the left edge is at two and five eighths inches. I always forget to take out the score tool until I'm ready to use it. But anyways, take that out. And I love that it can be stored here because then it doesn't get lost. I love that. Okay, so I've got my paper cut to five and a quarter square. I've got my starting point at two and five eighths, which I got from my chart. Okay, I'm going to punch. And then I'm going to stick my stylus in. And you want to have it to the right. There's a little cutout notch here. You want to stick it to the right and pull. Okay. Now I can ignore this. Now I, that was only my starting point. When it says score line, that's my starting point. I don't need to worry about that. What I do need to do, though, is see where here it says score guide? And it's pointing to this little plastic tab sticking out. That score line I just made, 
I want to match up to that score um, tip. I'm going to punch again. So in other words, the score line, um, this becomes an extension of that score line. I'm going to score again. Okay. I'm going to turn it to the left 90 degrees, put it towards the top, and slide it until this point lines up with that score line I just made. Punch again, score, turn, line up the score line, punch, and score. Okay, so I have that. Now I could finish off um, the favors with just this piece, but I'm gonna go one step further and I'm going to round the corners, okay? And all you do is stick your um, corner in the top and punch, okay? And it says on here, um, I think it says reverse punch and it has the little arrow, okay? So I'm gonna stick that in, punch, in, and punch, okay? So I've got that now. Okay, this time just for something different, um, I'm going to use the big chuck, okay? So what you're going to do is, whenever you're making 3D items, it is helpful to um, use your bone folder or even the scoring tool, which I'm going to stick back in here so I don't lose it. Okay, um, just to get a nice crease there. Okay, not 100% necessary, but it is helpful. And when I seal this, I'm just going to put adhesive on this bottom flap. Okay, and just on those um, two sides of the bottom flap. Okay, so that's done. Okay, now. <laughs> I will tell you that um, the ribbons I used on these favors, favors were from the ribbon that was a celebration item, um, but it was extremely popular, extremely popular. That makes me hope that they um, have another ribbon combo next year for celebration, but it's so popular and we just are way too close to the end of celebration to get any more. But it is um, really beautiful, and I've got some I'm using up. So that's what I'm using. However, we have plenty of other ribbons that are fabulous, okay? Plenty of other fabulous ribbons. I'm going to cut this probably about 18 inches, I would say. We have lots of other fabulous ribbons in both the Occasions catalog as well as our annual catalog. Um, so certainly you can find something else to finish off your projects with. Okay, I'm using the same gorgeous grape stripe ribbon that I used for my pocket card, that insert on my pocket card. Okay, um, now sometimes I just tie the bow, but I was having a little trouble with this earlier, so I am going to go ahead and tie a knot first, okay, and then make my bow. Just do whatever is easiest for you. Um, they both give great looks. My other one was just a little too loose, so I, whoops. So I decided making the knot first would help me. Okay. People always say, oh, Mary, you make such good not, uh, good bows. I can't make them like you. You know what? They're not perfect the first time. What I do is make sure I, and this was a little bit too long of ribbon, I sh but I like to have enough ribbon that I'm able to play with the loops and the tails till I get the size and the look of the bow that I want. Okay, I'm going to trim off those ends. Okay. And then I think on this one I'll do Happy Easter instead of Happy Spring. 
these would be easy, cute, and inexpensive for you to make for your Easter table or to put in baskets or for an Easter egg hunt. Sandy, you should get Kathy McConnell making these for her big Easter egg hunt she's having for her grandchildren. Wouldn't that be something? Okay, and then I'm going to use my one and three quarter inch scallop. I need another piece of Highland Heather scrap. Here we go. What do you think? Would you give these little favors a try? Do you like them? Okay. Oops. <laughs> I just dropped my stamp in my wastebasket. <laughs> That's why I had to lean over for a second there. Don't want to forget that. Okay. I'm going to pop this up on dimensional. And then my last step will be to add some of our adhesive back sequins. Okay. Now you can um, certainly do a tone on tone with the sequins and the ribbon and everything like I did here, or you can mix it up a little bit and add some different, um, different colors. So what do you think? Should I do the purple? We have the green, this iridescent color, um, the pink, which is, what is this? Grapefruit Grove, and then we have a yellow. Okay, I'm leaning towards the green. What would you choose? Any of them really would be great, I think. Oop. Okay, and then it's finished. Isn't that cute? Okay, any questions about either of those projects? Let me scroll up here a little. Oh, Chris, Chrissy says she would have used the green tail. Well, great minds think alike, Chrissy. <laughs> okay, but aren't they cute? Okay, and then of course, today's card. Um, I do wanna throw out a friendly reminder here in case you did not see previous uh, Facebook posts from today or you did not read my latest um, email newsletter. And if you're not getting my emails and you would like to, all you have to do is message me your email address and I will certainly put you on the list right away, okay? But I am running a special from now through the end of celebration, which is Sunday, March 31st. Okay, we are down to the wire here, ladies. If you have things you want and you want to get some celebration freebies, now is the time. Do not wait. I don't want you to forget and then Monday comes and you're upset that you um, missed out on getting a free item from celebration. But as an extra incentive in this last week of celebration, I personally am going to offer a free shipping incentive for your orders. So in addition to getting a free item with your $50 or more order, um, you can also get free shipping. I will take free shipping on all orders um, that are under $150. At $150, you start getting stamp and rewards. So the free shipping de then does not apply. Um, but if you would like to take advantage of my free shipping offer, all you have to do is email me or message me your order. Please include the product names, item number, and price. Okay, if you include all three of those things, there are sure not to be any mix-ups. Sometimes somebody just gives me a number and they might have transposed a number and it ends up being something they didn't want. Um, because they gave me an incorrect number, but I had no way of knowing that. But if you give me the product name, number, and price, that's a way for me to double check to make sure that you are getting all the things that you want, okay? And my free shipping incentive runs through the end of celebration, okay? So 
Sunday will be the last day for that. Okay, now um, remember to check back because I will be giving away each of these projects to two lucky winners, one each. Okay, but I also said that I would be sharing with you some new product information tonight, okay? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Storage by Stampin' Up, okay. I am so very excited about this. I have been asked several times in my business, um, is Stampin' Up ever going to come out with their own storage system? Um, so I feel like this is a long time in coming, but I am thrilled about it. I will be showing, um, sharing a video from Stampin' Up on my Facebook post this week. I will post one for tomorrow so that you can see um, from the company this, um, the video and all the pieces and how they work, okay? But here's a quick peek. Now it says, contact me to order now. These things are not available to demonstrators or customers until Monday, April 1st, okay? The good news is you don't have to wait too long. Now we are within one week of that. So by Stampin' Up! policy, I am able to take orders for these things, okay? So I'll be posting information about that as well. Um, I'm not able to order these until Monday, but I can collect orders so I have them ready to submit right away on Monday morning, okay? If you'd like to take advantage of that, please let me know. Uh, the free shipping, I'm sorry, does not apply to that. Free shipping incentive was already scheduled before I even knew about this coming out, okay? So my free shipping is only good through Sunday. But I will be sharing an incentive for ordering Storage by Stampin' Up! next week, okay? And that's an incentive I'm doing on my own, just like the free shipping, okay? But basically... There are different components to the storage system, okay? We have the ink pack and marker storage trays, okay? So that's what this is, or this, okay? That's actually two of them together. You get a set of five for $14. So you'll be able to store, uh, with that set for $14, you'll be able to store five ink pads and these are based on the new design of ink pads okay and their coordinating marker okay there will be stamp and blend trays which is what these are okay and each tray will hold six stamp and blends markers or three pairs depending on how you purchase yours and again you get five of those stackable trays there is an open storage cube, which can be seen um, with this ribbon here. There is a storage topper for $5, which you can put up on top of any of these stacks. And all of these things can be stacked high, okay? Or they can be kind of spread out and you have um, maybe a shorter, longer um, components, okay? but they line up right next to each other or they stack, okay? And these, the storage topper and the storage lid are interchangeable in all of these, okay? So you can put a storage compartment on any of these or you can put a flat lid on any of these, okay? Depending on how you want to use them, okay? And then the storage lid is $3. Oh, and one thing, this floral grid paper is something that was on the demonstrator supply list, okay? They are moving it from the demonstrator supply list starting Monday so that customers can also order it if they like. So they um, have a little ad for that here. Note here, it says while supplies last. Once this is gone, it's gone, okay? So if you want that, keep that in mind. The storage by Stampin' Up! is available starting April 1st, and like I said, I can start taking pre-orders on those because we are within that one week. Um, 
and then it will be, um, from what I understand, it will be um, available later in our annual catalog. But if you're like me, I'm excited. I want to um, go ahead and get started on that. One thing I love about this, first of all, I think the price point is excellent. Um, I believe they are made of a hard plastic. They have little peel and stick silicone feet for them, which I think is awesome. So it prevents slipping. They're stackable, but I think the best selling point of these are the best um, benefit of these is you can buy a little bit at a time. You don't have to buy a whole big storage unit to fit all your stuff in at once. Okay, you can buy a little bit at a time. Okay, so I love that, love that. The other thing I really like about this, um, when I saw them shown in the video, is that I think you could easily pick these things up because they're very light. They don't weigh a lot. So I think you could have all this organized and if you were going away to a craft retreat or a crop, or you just are going to a friend's house to stamp together, these would be things that would be easy to pick up, put in a tote bag, and take with you, okay? Now, I will be sharing this as well, okay? Stampin' Up! has offered this configuration chart, okay? So you can kind of count up what you have already and figure out what you need. Or if you're buying stamp pads and markers and stampin' blends or just um, refills, uh, could be ribbons and embellishments um, to store in these cubes, okay? But it gives you sort of a guideline and, tip and tips for figuring out how many of the different pieces you need and different ways to configure them, okay? So I'll be sharing all of these in the next few days. Hopefully I'll get them all on my site tomorrow. I'll also be sending out an email specifically about the storage by Stampin' Up, okay? Please note that you will not see them online until April 1st, but like I said, I can take pre-orders on them if you're interested. And I personally will have an ordering incentive for the storage by Stampin' Up. Okay, and I will be revealing that in the next day or so. Okay, any questions tonight? Okay, I hope you found tonight's video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the, um, the tutorials. Dana, the uh, floral grid paper is available to demonstrators on the supply list. It has not been available to customers yet. And we were told, um, in the leaders forum, we were told that it would be available to customers on Monday, April 1st, okay? If it's already out there online to customers, I'm not aware of that yet. Um, perhaps there was a glitch or an error, but I'll double check that. But I, I was told that it would be April 1st. Okay, any questions? I hope you enjoyed um, today's demonstrations. I hope you will try some of these on your own. And I would love, 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 oh, you just checked and it's there. Well, thanks, Dana, because that's totally different than what they told us on the leaders group. Um, they told us on Monday. So thanks, Dana, for pointing that out. I was just going by what they told us. Okay, um, I would love it if you would are doing some recreations or casing or even copying of these projects. If you would sh post your pictures or share with us how you are using them. Have a great night, ladies. Thanks for joining me.